Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Nick. I've been building PCs for about 25 years. We get lots of questions about the basics when it comes to building a PC. We decided that it was time to create a series of videos explaining every part of building a PC. We're even including things that some first time builders find really easy, but other first time builders find pretty intimidating. And if I'm being honest, pretty scary. Now these videos are not about assuming your skill level, it's about holding your hand and helping you build your first PC. So welcome to the first episode of the Back to Basic series where I'm going to show you how to build a PC from scratch and cover absolutely everything. This first episode has been highly requested in our comment section how to correctly install a Ryzen CPU on a motherboard and what to look out for when you're installing one. We're also going to show you how to install a box cooler as a bit of a bonus as well. This video is for demonstration purposes only. We've also got an Intel version of this video coming shortly, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you watch this entire video before asking any questions because chances are I'm going to answer those inevitable questions in this video somewhere. So as usual with our install guides, let's answer some of those questions right off the bat. The motherboard in this video is the ASUS ROG Strix B550F Gaming Wi-Fi, and the CPU is the AMD Ryzen 7 3700X. These parts were chosen purely for demonstration purposes only. This video is not a discussion about pricing, performance, or any type of availability. Yes, this guide applies to all AM4 and Ryzen CPU installations on every motherboard and CPU combination you're going to ask about in the comments. There are some uh, exceptions here, but those are incredibly rare. The exceptions are Ryzen 1st gen and 2nd gen CPUs have the gold arrow on the top of the chip, not on the bottom, and server motherboards that use AM4 have a slightly rotated socket, but it's not, not really relevant to most people's use cases. Yes, you'll need to be very careful with the CPU as it's possible to bend CPU pins and you can cause damage, and in some cases, the damage cannot be repaired. Don't let that scare you though, it's quite uncommon. You can do this, so let's get into it. Let's start off by familiarizing ourselves with the Ryzen CPU. On the top here, this is called the IHS or the Integrated Heat Spreader. This helps to spread the heat across the top of the entire CPU. Now, if we flip the CPU over to take a look at the pin side, you'll notice that there is 1,331 pins. And on the corner, you'll notice there is also a little gold triangle. This is to help you orient the CPU in the correct way once you're installing it into an AM4 socket. We will be covering this in just a moment. But let's move on and familiarize ourselves with the AM4 socket. So what you're seeing here is the AM4 socket itself. This socket is where we actually install the CPU. You'll also notice there is a silver bar or an arm, it's called the retention arm. When you lift up the retention arm, it allow the socket to accept an AM4 or a Ryzen CPU by placing it into the socket from the top. And once you've installed the CPU, you then lock the socket or close the socket so the CPU doesn't fall out. You'll also notice two plastic brackets, one at the top and one at the bottom. This is for mounting coolers. Not every single cooler uses this system, but this is the one that does ship with the board. We will be showing this and another way in this video as well. But let's uh, get into installing the CPU. Step one, lift the retention arm to open the socket. This allows the socket to accept the CPU. Take care not to bend the arm too far back towards the right as well, because you could cause damage, but don't be freaked out. Then locate the orientation marker on the top left-hand side of the socket. It's flashing yellow here, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Once you've located that, flip the CPU over and locate the orientation marker on the bottom of the CPU as well. What we're then going to do is align both the socket marker and the CPU marker so they're lining up together. Then you want to lower the CPU into the socket once it's correctly oriented and it should drop right into place. Then get the retention arm and push the retention arm to lock the CPU in the socket so it doesn't come out. And that's it. That's how you install a Ryzen or an AM4 CPU. Let's take a look at this from another angle. 
Let's try this all the way again from the beginning. You lift up the retention arm, ensure that the markers are both aligned when you lower the CPU into the socket, then lower the CPU into the socket. It should just drop into place nice and easily. Push the retention arm down, you'll hear it clip, and there you go. CPU is installed. Let's do this one more time from a different angle. Again, have the retention arm open. Drop the CPU into the socket. It should go in without any force. Do not push down. Once it's dropped in, push the retention arm straight down to lock it into the socket. And that's it. It's just that easy to install an AM4 or a Ryzen CPU on your brand new motherboard. Let's take a look at some cooler installation. First off, we're going to look at the Wraith Prism style coolers. These are usually with the mid to high end CPUs. What you're wanting to do is leave this plastic retention system on the socket. This allows this style cooler to be installed. This is also for other types of coolers. We will not cover this in this video. Get the bottom edge of the cooler and hook it onto the bottom clip with this metal bracket that's on the cooler itself. Then slowly lower the cooler down onto the top of the CPU. On the top of the cooler, you'll want to lower that bracket onto the hook again, like you did on the bottom of the cooler, and then push the arm towards the right to lock it into place. And there you go. The cooler is now fastened to the socket. Locate the PWM fan connector or the fan connector. And what we're going to do now is then locate the CPU fan header on the motherboard and you're going to be plugging this plug into that connector on your motherboard. And with a little bit of luck, it should look a little something like this. Let's move on to the Spire coolers. Many of the mid to lower end Ryzen CPUs include a cooler that is similar to this. Now we're going to show you how to install this cooler as well. What you'll want to do is remove these four screws on the factory cooler mounting setup. We do not need to use these brackets for this type of installation. It's pretty straightforward. Remove the screws, but do not lift the motherboard up because the backplate needs to stay in place. Then what we're going to do is lower the Spire cooler onto the top of the IHS of the CPU, making sure that you line each bolt up with the hole through the motherboard. Now I recommend only slightly tightening it to do each corner before you do a final tighten. So I usually do the bottom right, then the top left to apply pressure diagonally across the cooler. Then usually I'll recommend tightening this, but don't tighten it up all the way. Otherwise you're going to be in for a world of trouble trying to get that last one in. And once they're all slightly in, you'll be able to tighten them up and then the screws will physically stop moving. And that's when you know it is tight enough to continue. Then locate the PWM fan connector or the fan connector, locate a CPU fan header on your motherboard and plug that in. And with a little bit of luck, it should look a little something like this. And that's it. Nice and easy. For the box coolers for both the Prism and the Spire and Stealth style coolers, they have pre-applied thermal paste. Now in our demonstration, we didn't apply thermal paste because it was for demonstration purposes only. And you can see that both of our coolers do not have thermal paste because we've used these coolers before but you do need to use thermal paste if you're using any type of CPU cooler for any type of CPU. And we'll be covering CPU thermal paste application in another video coming very, very soon. I think I covered pretty much everything in this video and I hope this video helped you out in some way and it helps you gain a little bit of confidence when building your first Ryzen based PC. If you've got any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below, but as usual, make sure you read the comment section because myself or someone probably would have answered your question already. Please take that into consideration when asking any questions. And I only say that because I just don't want you guys to waste a whole bunch of your time. And I really, really do hope this helped you out when building your first Ryzen PC. I know it can be scary and to be honest, uh, I don't remember what it was like to build my first PC. It was that long ago, but I know from our comments that it can be quite scary. If you like this video and it helped you out, please hit the like button, uh, hit subscribe, or consider supporting us on Floatplane or hitting the join button down below. If you didn't like this video, you know what to do, hit the dislike button twice. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nico Gear Seekers. You peak. 
we seek. And I really hope this guide helped you guys out. I know for a lot of people, it seems pretty simple and pretty straightforward, but to a lot of people who have never built a PC before, this can be quite scary. And that's why we're here. Thanks for watching.